black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. We got a simple one, bit of a fridge dive, bit of a use up supplies, right? Open bacon, half tomato. But when he needs it, he needs it. He needs a BLT, fries, gravy on a toasted jalapeno cheddar bagel. Simple one, delicious one. Let's do it. Y'all already know we're going air fryer bacon, five strips at 370 for nine minutes. That's what it's gotta be. Perfect bacon every time. It's a cheat codes day. Demi-glace, demi-glace. <laughs> From the package, of course, one and a quarter cups of water. And we add this in and we bring it to a thicken, essentially. We like them thick, dark and thick around here. <laughs> yes, we do. Shout out my Dominicans one time. And there you have it. Not but a minute later. Nice, thick. Beautiful demi glace and or gray man, whatever you want to call it. All right, so perfect bacon. Okay. And we got a serving of fries going in the AF. Bacon infused fries should be enough. These would be like 12 minutes on high 400. Dipping sauces for the fries. We're on our gravy, as you saw, as well as our ketchup. Gravy blend. <laughs> Time to build the bagel BLT. We all know by now that heavy mayo is required. Then we're gonna lay our bacon layer. And then we come in with our Tommy's, three sliced Tommy tomato. And we bring in the top, many mayo adhesive on the top too. Come in with our perfectly plucked, plush lettuce. And let me zoom a bit out for the stack and the clothes. And we enjoy our jalapeno cheddar BLT extra saucy bagel in all its glory. We plate that up perfectly. Come in with the fries de Francais. And then we finish with our Dunkin' sauces. The gravy and the catchy. The best crispy Cavendish fries and a beautiful jalapeno cheddar BLT bagel. Let's do it. All right, y'all. Simple one, very like pedestrian lunch. You saw it come together. Delicious though. Very, very high on my delicious scale. Um, let's enjoy this, but also let's talk about this comment. Maybe I'll just put it up in the center because when I put it up to the left, it's kind of too small for people to read. So I'll put it in the center, but it's a comment from my latest video um, from a very awesome subscriber who's been with me for forever. Very supportive. Um, just saying, basically paraphrasing, like I saw, I see how much uh, working in a restaurant like made you, you know, happy. And would you ever consider doing that again? Um, let's talk about this past summer as we eat. I did go back to a restaurant for two months and uh, I'll tell you the tale, I will elaborate. But before that, we gotta get a couple delicious crispy Cavendish type fries in thy mouth while they're still piping and while the gravy is still steaming. And then we can do our blend as well. You guys know I love to blend. Oh, wow. That's amazing. These are the best fries. You guys know this by now, though. The bubbly, crispy Cavendish. Mmm. Then you do the sweet and the salty blend of the gravy and the ketchup. It's just perfect. All right, well, 
I did go back to cooking. I went back to a restaurant for two months in this, this past summer. I, sourced out a place that seemed cool to me, independent place, not a chain, not like an Applebee's or a keg or anything like that, but an independently owned and ran place that has a good rep. It's pretty chill. Um, down to earthy type casual, but at the same time, good, well done, house made for the most part, elevated fare. And so that's the type of place that I would want to work at. Somewhere that's not a chain, and this is my little bit of food sn snobbery and I admit it a little bit of food snobbery coming in but I didn't want to work at a place where you pull things out of boxes and bags and packages and just basically fry them or heat them up and I wanted it to be a little more high level so you know, I reached out, went for the interview, met the head chef slash manager, um, oh, this is going to be tough to, this is a big bite, I got, I, I got to smush this. Met with him. Had like a 40 minute conversation in his office. Cool guy, maybe a couple years older than me. But he went to school for culinary, he studied culinary. That was his mission and purpose in life. Um, really nice guy, great guy. And we just unleashed, we just had a convo. Like those are the best interviews when you just have a combo with somebody. It's not, they just allow you to just kind of be yourself and speak. And that's what it was like with this interview. And then I negotiated the wage. I negotiated myself into the higher echelon of the wages because I have a shit ton of experience. And then <clears throat> in interviews, when I talk about building my YouTube channel and stuff, I kind of have this catalog, if I want to share it with them, of like this proof positive work ethic that I'm down for the craft, that I love the craft. that I've committed myself in my own endeavors and kind of created a, a business for myself and marketed myself. And so as a managerial figure, he was really impressed with that. So I was able to have more value in a sense in, in my negotiation of the wage. So I kind of negotiated my tells, myself into the highest I could basically get paid. And so I started working there and um, basically they needed somebody on the line and my side was where I got put was fryers, which is a heavy section because it's a ton of apps, a ton of fries of wings and like Korean cauliflower. And then you're all constantly on fries and stuff. And. I mainly wanted to get back out into the industry because I felt
that through working from home and through the pandemic and that, that I had isolated myself from society kind of. And I felt like it would be healthy for me to get back out into the work world and like meet people and have friendships and relationships again. So I'm in there. I'm on Fry. I know what's up. I've worked in this position many times before in my life. I worked every position in the kitchen. I can, I kill the game. They immediately, the guys on the line approve of me. They're like, yeah, he's great. And even beyond that, there was like these ridiculous methods that they hadn't even thought of for going to get stuff when certain orders would come in. I'm like, why don't we just have this at the station? So I optimized the station. This isn't to toot my own horn. This is just the facts. And even the head uh, guy online who does board call and kind of, he's the expediter. <clears throat> he's like the head chef in the kitchen under the guy who hired me. So he does counts and quality and ordering and all these things. And he said to me, he's like, he's like, you're the first person who's worked at station who's ever been smart enough to do that. He's like, I didn't even think of that. I was like, yeah, well, we need to have these things here instead of running to get them because then I'm off the station. Then I can't attend to everything that's happening at the station. Like if I have things down in the fryer and I got to run over here to get this thing so I can make a chicken Parmesan, like what would like, it doesn't make sense. So it's like, why wouldn't I not just have it at the station so I can just reach for it and it's optimal. So I ended up working there for a total of like seven weeks and near the end of me leaving, I just, you know, when you go to work somewhere and you try your best to fit in. I'm a pretty good social chameleon, but sometimes you go somewhere and you just know instinctually, you're like, this isn't my crew. These aren't my people. And I kind of knew it right from the get go, but I gave it a chance. Like I was like, okay, I'm willing to, to give this a chance. Maybe I'll grow into these people. But as time wore on, I knew more and more every day. That this wasn't my crew. And here's a bit specifically why. They were all very much all the men on the line, the males, it was mostly females out front. One server was a guy and then dudes in the kitchen. And most of like the guys on the line who are, who are seen as like the most competent ones in the kitchen. Cause then you have the prep guys and the dishwasher and that, and those are unfortunately for people who are either still learning or there may be I don't mean this in a rude way, but they're just mentally a little, you know, they're just not quite uh, mentally fit in terms of their IQ maybe type thing. And that's not to say that every dishwasher or anybody like that is not there, but one of the dishwashers used to come in and he used to 
he was he would just he would like talk to himself and 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 like he would sing along loud with music and he would just be sweating and he seemed high on his on drugs but he seemed high on like prescription drugs like pharmaceuticals i think he had some issues and then guys there's some guys in the back that were just like a little off definitely had cr criminal records and stuff But the main guys that I was working with on the line were good guys, super nice, intelligent dudes, but they loved, they all were the type of people who watched like Teletoon and Cartoon Network, and they loved like Rick and Morty, and they were always quoting movies from the past and stuff and while that's all fun and good for me like i don't play i don't watch cartoons i don't really play video games and these guys were all into video games too um and it just i was just like these aren't really my people i can just tell these aren't really my people and then there was this one dude who had been there for years. And I ended up closing with him a lot of the time. And I just, he was in, he would incessantly banter, like talk to me about, you know those people who just have thoughts about stuff that they like in life? Once again, video games, cartoons. And at work they just, start telling you about it and everybody on the line who was the more normal neurologically speaking we all knew that he was this way and we all you do like the yeah yeah oh that's crazy oh cool like you kind of just put up with it but it's like invasive and overwhelming and i just I got to a point where I'm like, I can't work with this guy. And the majority of my shifts were with him. And he would just constantly talk at me about shit that he was interested in, that I had no interest in talking about. So that kind of was my final straw. of A, knowing that I didn't really fit there. Although everybody was super nice. But I could feel it energetically, like I don't belong here. And also I was like, this is contract, I'm contracting by working here. I'm not expanding, I need to expand. Like I've already done this when I was I was like, I've already done this job in my past. I've already done this in my early 20s. This is getting me nowhere. Why am I here? I've already done this. I've, this is old to me. This is old news. So I was like, I don't, I can't, I, I need to expand. I can't stay here and do this. I've already done this in my life. Like, this is old hat for me. So I recognize that. The social aspect of it wasn't really beneficial. And then I was just kind of like, trying to put, put up with this person And I couldn't do it. And I also felt really <laughs> kind of bad when he told me he'd been there for like something like two and a half, three years. And then he told me what he was making on his hourly and that he got like a 50 cent raise this year. And I was making three more dollars an hour than him working a lesser position 
just off the fact that I negotiated my way into that position and the interview of being like, this is, these are my capabilities. <laughs> and I was just like, dude, I'm getting paid three more dollars an hour than you. I just started here and you've been slaving for this place for three years and they give you like a dollar collectively more an hour over those last two and a half, three years. I felt like bad for him. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know, figure it out. Negotiate your worth. Um, but ultimately, I gave it a good go. I gave it a try, but it just wasn't my, wasn't my people. wasn't my place. Perhaps there's another place that would be more fitting for me if I tried again. And I, like, met my tribe. But at the same time, I just feel like going back to work in a restaurant, though enjoyable at times, is a regressive step for me. I feel like I've gone beyond that now and I need to do something maybe even just different or further or just believe more in my own entrepreneurial abilities and keep doing that, you know, keep trying to make it through my own creativity, my own ways of thinking and creating and, and becoming the master of my ship because I think to go that way is to go backwards. I've already done it. So though it's enjoyable and fun, but it's in the past, I need to move forward and expand. So yeah, anyways, but yes. All right. A delicious classic. Hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Eat good, live well. If you like this content, please like, comment, and subscribe, as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel. Thank you for watching, eat good, live well, and stay true.